For the last three decades, Knowledge Center at Bursa has offered technology, resources, services, space, and a sense of community. Since 1985, 14,000 titles have been collected with care and attention to high financial literacy standards. In collaboration with a global community of institutions, we ensure access to the world's diverse intellectual and cultural economic heritage, as well as fast online services for connectivity to the financial world. Serving the Bursa Malaysia community and beyond, Knowledge Center at Bursa empowers you in your trading and investment analysis research. Financial information at my fingertips. Visit Knowledge Center at Bursa Malaysia today for the collections, for the services, for the sense of community. You have suffered financial loss while investing and you think your bank, broker, fund management company, unit trust management company, PRS provider or distributor or their agent or representative is responsible. You need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress. Where do you go? Sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution. First. Lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further questions. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favour, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favour, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280. Bursa Malaysia has been part of the Malaysian economic growth for over four decades. 
we have been working relentlessly to create a transparent, efficient and vibrant stock exchange. While we've been working at building a vibrant marketplace, inclusivity and contributing towards economic growth, we have also channeled efforts and resources towards supporting the community at large. Shares to Share is one such effort, which has been developed to create positive impact towards society and the environment. To put it simply, Shares to Share is a transparent and easily accessible facility that enables investors to donate their listed securities or proceeds from the sale of their listed securities towards charity through Yayas Unverse in Malaysia. You can donate odd lots or even board lots. The funds from the sale of these shares will be channeled to approved charitable organisations and their respective initiatives or projects. Bursa Malaysia has waived its portion of the transfer fee, clearing and trading fees for all transactions that are conducted under Shares to Share. The participating brokers of Shares to Share have also agreed to waive their portion of the transfer fee and brokerage. The charitable organisations that have been selected have undergone the necessary due diligence process and have been duly approved by an independent selection committee. At least half a million populations live with some kind of disability. They are most of the time being left behind. We need to empower them, otherwise they will continue to be the liability. A lot of human resources wasted. We provide a lot of support for persons with disability who are young adults and adults. We have a social enterprise called Project I'm Possible where we manage to hire all persons with disability to work here. We have a cafe, bakery, weaving and we have an art gallery. Purity of thought, word and deed, that is action is very important to be really successful. We must know some skills to be able to help us then paperwork. The grant from shares to share will be used for, one is sewing, handicraft, classical dance, and so on. Our patients have to be fed. They have to be looked after. We look out for any sort of disease they might develop, and you know, also those unforeseen circumstances. Thanks to Bursa Initiative, we can be a little bit easy on our patients if they are family members. Donations will all be channeled to organizations that are involved in the sustainable development of Malaysia. The Shares to Shares scheme offers you the chance to do so in a simple and effective way. Versus Shares to Share allows us to do good by donating our shares to charities. You join us in making a difference to the society by donating your listed shares. Shares to Share is open to all donors, individual as well as corporates or other types of entities. You can transfer your listed securities via Bursa Anywhere app at a click. For more information, please visit our Bursa Malaysia website. Hello everybody! Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia managed by our company LifeChamp. Our webinar title today is Strategies for Trading Fibonacci Retracements. So my name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this session. Now, before we go to this strategy for trading Fibonacci retracement uh, sessions, we have a special guest from CDRAC who will spend a bit of time today to tell you what exactly is CDRAC and how they can help you in your dispute resolution. And she's none other than Ms. Chai Mingyi, who is a case manager from CDRAC. So uh, welcome, to, uh, welcome to this session, Mingyi. Hi, Shane. Thank you. How are you today? Good, good. All right. So I will just hand over uh, this session to you for a quick overview of CDRAC. Okay. All right. Okay, let me share screen first.
Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mengi. Uh, I'm a case manager from CDREC. So what is CDREC? In, uh, in short, CDREC, um, in full term, is Securities Industry Dispute Resolution Center. So we are set up, this our disclaimer. So we were set up by uh, SC, Securities Commission, to act as a dispute resolution center. So uh, we are an independent and impartial body that helps resolve capital markets relevant disputes uh, through mediation and adjudication. Okay, um, so uh, why do we exist? Uh, we are a component of the investor protection infrastructure in the capital markets. So uh, we are actually impartial when it comes to handling the cases. Uh, many investors think that the only solution when they face with monetary losses um, with the bank, with the investment bank or fund manager or unit trust consultant is to file a claim in court. So let's say when you have a claim when it's a very small amount, you wouldn't want to get a lawyer because uh, the legal fee is so much higher, right? So this is where you can come to CDRAC to um, lodge your claim and then we will, we are actually an alternative dispute resolution center to help you to resolve the dispute with your investment bank or your unit trust consultant. And um, it's also free for retail investors for claims up to 250,000 and it's less formal than a court process. Lah. So how do we benefit investors? Um, we are a one-stop center that handles um, capital market rated disputes. So we also contribute towards enhancement of investor protection by, um, let's say we have a previous cases and then how we improve the practice of our capital markets, uh, capital markets products provider. And we also enhance an investors' understanding of the market and their responsibilities for their investments. So yeah. Like what I said, we are a specialized, independent, and impartial body resolving capital market-related disputes with expert knowledge and experience. So we will go into detail later. Okay, um, so who is eligible to file a claim with us? Uh, it has to be an individual investor or a sole proprietor. Also, the claim must be against a CDREC member. So who is our member? So um, whoever has a license from SC, they will automatically fall under our list of members. So to be... Uh, to, to be sure, you can always uh, visit our website and there's a list of members there which we update um, every uh, almost every day. If there's a new member, then we'll update. So you can check if uh, your investment bank is listed under our member. And uh, if the dispute involves a capital market product or service and it has to relate to any monetary loss. Lah. So... Before you file a claim with us, you will have to lodge a complaint, official complaint with the member first um, before you come to us. So uh, after you've lodged a claim with them, then they will have an inter internal investigation uh, for up to, they have to reply to you within uh, 90 days. If not, if there, there's no reply from them, then you can still come to us and file a claim with us. So let's say if they already reply to you, and if you're still not satisfied with that reply, then you can still come to us, lah, lost your claim with us. Okay, so uh, how can we help you? So um, what are capital market products that um, that we can, the claims that we can receive? So if it involves securities like shares and warrants, derivatives, PRS, fund management, or unit trust. Lah. So how you can lodge your claim with us? So you can always download uh, our claim form from our website and then you can email us or yeah you can email us or you can always call us and then we can email you the claim form then you can fill in and then just email the complete form to us and then uh, an assigned case manager will contact you lah. so uh, this is our process so yeah, like what I said, um, before you come to CDREC, you have to uh, file a complaint with the member first. So they will have 90 days to resolve the complaint through their internal investigation. And if you're still not satisfied, then you can lodge a complaint with us within uh, 180 days from the member's final reply. And then the first stage at our at CDREC would be case management, where we will assess eligibility and merits of the claim. And we will inquire to both parties to understand um, both parties concern and get more information and documents from both parties and if it's eligible then we will move on to the next stage which is uh, mediation so for mediation we will have a panel of mediators 
who are experienced in capital markets, then they will, um, they will fix a date and both parties will come to our office and the mediator as well. So the mediator will facilitate some communication and encourage open and constructive discussion and try to explore any uh, possible resolution for both parties. So during mediation stage, um, it's voluntary for both sides. So um, no forcing to enter into any agreement unless if you want to go into the settlement agreement yourself. So let's say if your mediation still fails, there's no resolution during mediation, then we move on to the next stage, which is adjudication. Same thing, we will have a panel of adjudicator. And um, so also same thing, we fix a date and then both parties come to our office and the adjudicator will have already looked at your documents and he or she would ask you questions to uh, inquire more and get more details so that she, he or she would be able to come up to a decision. So um, it's less formal than what is in the court. Lah. So yeah, this is our email address and um, you can submit your general inquiries through our website or email, or you can always call us. Lah. Right. So that's it about CDREC. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mengi, for your uh, brief overview about CDREC and how it can help investors to resolve a uh, res uh, dispute. All right. So, uh, so if any question you can write in the Q&A, I think uh, Mingyi will address them uh, in a short while via text. All right. So without further ado, let me just uh, quickly move on to our main agenda today, which is our webinar topic, Strategies for Trading Fibonacci Retracement. I'm sure many of you here who sign up for the sessions today will want to learn how do you trade using Fibonacci Retracement. Okay, Fibonacci is the golden ratio. Uh, how do you use the very significant support and resistance level to do trading decisions? Today, we're going to examine exactly that. So before we begin, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we share in this session is only for educational purpose. So there's no any recommendation for you to buy or sell any listed securities that we mentioned here. If you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risk. Allow me to introduce our speaker today. She's a licensed financial planner certified by the Malaysian Securities Commission Financial Planner Representatives uh, License, CMSL, and a Bank Negra Financial Advisor Representative License, FAR. She's a course trainer and public speaker at Financial Planning Association Malaysia, Symphony, and Bursa Malaysia. She has over 25 years of experience in education, accumulated over 50,000 students, and conducted over 200 large-scale corporate courses. She is also a best-selling author who has published six books on investment and financial planning. And her articles have appeared in financial magazines such as Personal Money, Money Compass, and many more. She's none other than Miss Pauline Yong. Pauline, how are you today? Okay, good. Hello. Hi, Shane. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's a very good early to see morning. You again. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So I'll take over from your side now. Yes. Okay, so let me share my screen. So today, um, it is very interesting. We are going to, uh, I'm going to share with you guys um, strategies for trading Fibonacci, okay? So um, in the, um, in this session, what you're going to learn is that um, will be all the um, essence, okay? So I will not go through like a bit around the bush. I will go straight to the essence of uh, Fibonacci, and then how you can uh, apply it uh, on a meaningful basis. Okay, before I start, right? So may I know how many of you do not have um, uh, technical analysis background? So that means you 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 have not um, been using technical analysis for for your trade or investment, uh, and then you you just started out in learning. Okay, so how many of you have zero uh, or little experience? You can type a zero. Um, in the chat, okay? So I just want to know how many of you like really have zero um, background. <laughs> oh, I see that uh, Yin Yin, um, Kam Wa and um, um, Jessica and Jason and um, Charissa, Fok Wing and Rachel. Wow, so many of you have zero background and uh, WH. Oh, okay. Then you have come to the right place. And uh, one says that you have uh, about one year. One means that you have some experience. Okay, that's good. Um, the the um, This Fibonacci retracement is a very important part of technical analysis. Um, so we are, I'm going to um, 
before the Fibonacci, right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the support and resistance so that you have some background of uh, technical analysis knowledge. And then, then only we go into this um, Fibonacci. Okay. And um, uh, Ahmad also have uh, some experience in the um, technical analysis. That's good. Okay. Let me um, in, uh, put up my slides. So first, we're going to learn about some history. So the Fibonacci is actually um, derived many, many years ago. Okay, so in this case, you see that this is like before, sen, uh, before uh, century 200 years and also 1,200, which is uh, 13th century. Okay, so 13th century, what kind of world is that? That's a, a very ancient um, time whereby um, this guy, his name is called Leonardo. Um, of Pisa, and then his name is uh, short form is called Fibonacci. So then this theory he developed it, and then so it's named after him. So since then we all use these um, numbers as a uh, Fibonacci numbers. So what is this Fibonacci sequence? Fibonacci sequence is a, a series of numbers that follow a unique integer sequence. So there are some numbers that there's a way of calculation. And then these numbers appear in the nature and also in all aspects of life. So you can see that, um, for example, um, the, the number two, uh, number one, two, three, uh, five and eight, 13. So these are all Fibonacci numbers. And so these numbers actually are quite common in the number of the petal of the flowers. So if you look at the flowers, for example, the daisy. Daisy flower, you have about five petals. And then um, some flowers, you have eight petals. So you see that, wow, this, all this natural nature thing, they are all um, happening in terms of the Fibonacci sequence. And you can look at the, um, the stars, the galaxy, and also the the buildings, everything all in Fibonacci ratio. So to us, we look at the Fibonacci numbers and the ratio, and then we feel that, oh, these are very uh, well proportioned. So for example, it's a one third proportion. So the golden ratio is two third, one third. Okay, so these are the Fibonacci golden ratio. So you see that uh, in building structure, if we can see some building structure having this kind of a proportion, Okay, the top, maybe the um, rooftop is about one third, whereas the structure of the building is about two third. And then you see that this one, this house is a proportionate house and then it's a, it's a very nice house. And if let's say you see a, a house that has um, a rooftop that is like half of the house, 50% is the rooftop. And then the other 50% is the the structure of the house. So then you see that, oh, this house is not nice because it looks strange, it's out of proportion. And that is because we are so used to this one third, two third of a ratio. And then when things happening in this sequence, we see that, that these are beautiful and they are nice and comfortable to, to our eye. And then we, we, we want to associate with these numbers. So then, Naturally, in the stock market, we will have to uh, apply this Fibonacci as well because um, since that it is always happening in the nature, so it may also happening in the financial world. Okay, so that is why um, the, all the traders, okay, and uh, people who are in the technical analysis, they all learn about Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so you have to learn. So how do you calculate this Fibonacci? So here we are looking at the number starts with zero. Zero plus one is equal to the one. So it will be the first two numbers add together will be the third number. And then these two numbers add together will be the um, back number, the, the next number. And then to get the next number, you have to add this number and this number, the front two number to get this number. And then to get this number, you have to add this, the front, two numbers, okay, this front two numbers, and you get the third number. And this will continue. So can any one of you use your calculator, you tell me what is the next number here, okay? If you have a calculator, 
you use your calculator. If you have a mobile phone, you use a mobile phone. You calculate the next Fibonacci number. Ah, very good. So I have Iman 233 and Chanish um, 233. Very good. And uh, Edmund 233. Okay, so how do you get this 233? 144 plus 89. 233. Okay, very good. Yes. So, and, and this number you continue, you will get a series of all these Fibonacci numbers. And sometimes when we trade in the stock market, we'll see that, oh, this 144 is one ringgit 44 cents. Okay, so some stocks, when they are at the level of one ringgit 44 cents, you see that they are kind of like hitting a resistance. You can't break, break above that one ringgit and 44 cents. And um, 233, three, two ringgit and 33 cents as well. So these are all um, uh, some Fibonacci numbers that are reacting well in the stock market. And it's like a support and resistance as well. Okay, so these Fibonacci numbers can act as a support and resistance in the stock market. Then we look at the ratio. Okay, the ratio is the, the important part because it is the ratio that determine our retracement strategies. Okay, so this today's lesson, we're going to look at the retracement strategies of the Fibonacci, whereby we look at the ratio. Okay, so the ratio comes from this Fibonacci ratio. Okay, how do we calculate? So here we are looking at the two numbers divide. Okay, so 55 divided by 89. Okay, 144 divided by 233. So that means what? That means we are using this 144 divided by the next number, 233. And then the 55 divided by 89. Okay, so if you were to use your calculator, 89 divided by 144, and you will get 0 0.618. And then use 144 divided by 233, you will also get 0 0.618. And then if you go on, you will get 0 0.618, 0.618, 0.618. So then this 0 0.618 is the golden ratio. It is a Fibonacci number. And, and if you were to use the, the back, number to divide by the front number, you see what you get, okay? So let's try, 144 divided by 89. Then you will see that in your calculator, you have 1.618. So it's very interesting. So the, the back number divided by the front number give you 1.618. The front number divided by the back number give you 0 0.618. So do you see that this 618 is happening all the time? Okay, it's happening all the time. Okay, um, level is very important. Fibonacci, yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so Vaisu, you are right. The Fibonacci levels, okay, so this, all these levels are very important. So later on, we will see um, the chart. Okay, so let me go through the, the numbers, the calculations, so that you know how these numbers derive, okay? And um, so all these numbers happening in the nature. And next, we're going to look at, go straight into the trading part. Okay, so now we are looking at the retracement. So retracement for Fibonacci, there are two applications. One is called the Fibonacci retracement. The other one is called the Fibonacci extension. Okay, so today's session, I will focus on the Fibonacci retracement. But however, I will briefly also talk about that Fibonacci extension, okay, when we are in the chart. So here, what do you mean by retracement? Okay, a retracement happens is when, okay, a retracement happens is when, let's say you are on the uptrend, okay? So when you are on the uptrend, then you will have this retracement. So this retracement is actually looking at a, a temporary retreat because you are advancing. But however, in the real world, you wouldn't see a, a price chart that is always going higher and higher and higher and there is no profit taking. Sure, people will profit take. You can know better how good, how promising is the stock. So for example, NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been going higher and higher and the people say, oh, this NVIDIA, the, it's very promising. It's 80% of the market share and the price uh, can go to $1,000. So the, the price keep going higher. But 
when it is going higher, it is also retracing. So at the moment, it is retracing now. So now at the moment, if you do look at this NVIDIA, you have to uh, measure the retracement ratio. Same thing goes to the um, UEMS, ECOVAS, um, IWCT, and all the constructions and um, uh, property stocks that are related to the um, Johor Singapore Economic Zone. So these all these hot stocks, you see that, oh, it's very promising because once you have this economic zone and then you, all the um, people will be coming in and then they will buy up the properties and then um, the properties market, they will be earning a lot of money. Okay, so then people will, 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 will be looking at buying into these stocks now. And then you see that these stocks are going higher and higher. Okay, but when it is going higher and higher, of course, people will take profit. And then there is this retracement. So therefore, this retracement is something that we want to look at. Okay, how, how far it will go down before you enter again. Okay, so that is why we want to know. Okay, can you go back to the ratio chart? I want to take a screenshot. Sure. Okay, so um, Steve, Steven, here, this is the ratio here. Okay, you take a screenshot. So it will be the front number divided by the back number will give you 0 0.618. And then the back number divided by the front number will give you 1.618. Okay. Okay. So done. Okay. So let's continue. So this is also important. If you want, you can take a screenshot as well. So these are all the Fibonacci retracement levels that you will see in the chart uh, shortly. So um, do you need to memorize? Okay, usually I wouldn't ask people to memorize, but for me, because I'm used to the numbers, so I'm naturally, I can remember the numbers. But for new beginners, right, you may not be able to memorize these numbers. So what you need to do is that you need to do uh, like a, a a round up okay so basically this 0.236 is looking at one quarter okay so this is at a uh, one quarter one quarter ratio okay so one quarter retrace one quarter and then the 0 0.382 is one third okay close to one third lah. and then 0.5 is half ratio is half and then this 618 is two third and uh, 0.764 is three quarter so you are looking at uh, a chart whereby it is going higher 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 and then there is a retracement now this retracement compared to going higher and then this retracement and then you have another one going higher, higher, and this retracement. Okay, so you have three types of a retracement. Okay, so can anybody tell me A, B, C, okay, and then, then it reverses, okay, then it reverses and then it reverses. So can anybody tell me ABC, right? This ABC, which one um, is the strongest in terms of the momentum? Which one is the strongest in terms of the momentum? Okay, you can type ABC. Okay, so I have Lili, I have Hui, Hui, uh, Hui, Hui, and then I have um, Adrian, I have Ayman, I have Ahmad, I have Al Alif, I have <laughs> Hazwan, I have many people, all are giving me the same answer. Um, Faizu, okay, and uh, Edmund, okay. Okay, so here we are looking at majority of you giving me this answer. So let me share with you uh, a real chart so you can see for yourself. Uh, let's say um, NVIDIA. Okay, we can look at NVIDIA, we can look at UEMS later. Okay, you, um, I show a daily chart first, okay? Uh, let me erase all these things. Okay, 
So from this uh, uptrend here, so this is the uptrend. Uh, can you tell me what is the ratio of this retracement? Okay, this ratio, this part here. What is the ratio if we are looking at this uptrend? Okay, and then this retracement. Um, what proportion? Okay, I before I pull out the retracement Fibonacci retracement scale from your eyes. I want you guys to train yourself looking by your eyes. You can tell what ratio. Okay, can anybody tell me by looking at the eyes? Okay, by by from your um straight from your eyes. What kind of a retracement is this? This this part here. Okay, I didn't. I I'm not talking about this one. I talk about this one. Assuming that you are looking at this uh level where you don't see that you have this higher high. Okay, so assuming that you are at here, you you are looking at this retracement, and then you you are thinking, how oh, when do I want to go back in? I wanted to buy this Nvidia for a long time, but the share price keep going higher. When do I need to go back in? Okay, so if you look at this retracement right you can see that it is about one quarter yeah it's about one quarter like that or even lower than that one quarter so and then you see that after it retraced by uh, a little bit and then then it immediately people are swarming in and then to buy in again so what is the psychology behind uh, you look at the uems okay so th these are all um, uh, a good examples whereby you can see that their retracement are very, very little. Okay. So here, let me erase all this. Okay. So here we are looking at this as well. And this is the uptrend here. And then this is a retracement. So we are looking at this is also a, a strong uptrend and then the retracement is retracing very little as well. So what is the psychology behind? So the psychology is that, oh, this one must be, I, I really wanted to buy this one so much. Uh, either it is NVIDIA or UEMS. I wanted to buy so much is that whenever there's a retracement, after the retracement, I will just go in. But people don't wait for too big the retracement. Uh, you could have wait for a uh, one third retracement, or you could have wait for um half of a retracement or two third, uh six one eight of a retracement. But you see that they didn't retrace so much, and then they retrace like one quarter like that, two three six, and then the price started to increase again. So what this tells you is that this kind of a small retracement. Okay, so if you see those with a small retracement, about one quarter or less than one third, uh, that means that this stock has usually they are full of momentum. They still have a momentum to go higher. Okay, the 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 correction, the big correction, that will not come so soon. Okay, it will go higher a little bit further before you see uh, like a bigger correction. Okay, so the bigger correction not yet come. So. So then that tells you the psychology behind by looking at the retracement. Okay, so that is number one. So number one, lesson number one is that the extent of the Fibonacci retracement, okay, the extent of this Fibonacci retracement will give you the sense of a uh, uh, direction, okay, of this uh, momentum of this underlying share, whereby how, how high it will go. Okay, or the duration, okay, whether it can still go for a longer duration. So usually if you are looking at a brief kind of a retracement and then you immediately you, you go higher. So that means that the chances of this going higher is there. And at the same time, the duration maybe is longer. So maybe the pathway to on the uptrend maybe is longer. Okay, so that is number one. Then number two. By looking at the Fibonacci retracement, we want to see at what level, then only we can go back in and buy. So for example, this one, who can tell me at what level, then only you can buy? Okay, so now I'm going to use this Fibonacci. So in the trading view, so for those of you who do not have uh, experience in the chart, you can actually go to tradingview.com. 
Okay, so you can search this tradingview.com. Okay, so this is the, the website and you can sign up with any of your email address. Okay, and then you can get all this free chart. So then you go to the left-hand side, the icon bar there, and then you go for the uh, Fibonacci retracement. Okay, so I click this Fibonacci retracement and how you draw the chart is always go from left to right. Swing high, swing low, or swing low, swing high. So meaning the essence of drawing the Fibonacci is for this um, trading view, you have to go from left to right. And then number two, it is identifying the swing high and swing low. Okay, so if let's say you are going in the uptrend like this, so you will start with a swing low first and then a swing high. So it will be left to right. So your left-hand side will be the swing low, and then the right-hand side will be the swing high. So this is click point A, you click, and then you drag, and then the upper part, you can click one more time, whereby this zero line here will be just covering the top part of this, um, this um, chart, okay, so swing high here. So swing low is here, and then the swing high is here. And then you can see that there's this um, point B. This point B, you can actually move here and then doesn't matter. You can still see that point B is here and your level is still the same. It, it didn't change your level. So I, I drag it out like that is because I want to see this clearly, okay? You can, you can drag like this, you can drag like this, but they are the same level. Okay, we're all talking about the same level here. So here we are looking at this um, Fibonacci level. 0 0.236 is here, 0 0.382 is here, 0 0.5 is here, and then 0 0.618 is here. And then there is also one 0 0.786, three quarter is here. So if let's say the chart go down and then this will be testing on the first support level, two, three, six, one quarter. And the tail has almost touching this level, this tail, almost, okay, heaven. And if let's say it passed this level, let's say it go down, go down, 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 and then it didn't see a reversal here and it passed this level, then the next support will be this level, 0.382 will be on uh, 56 cents, okay? So it will be this level. So if after this level, you didn't see a reversal and then it continue to go down, then the next level will be this level, okay? So therefore, each of these Fibonacci level, right? They act as a support and resistance, okay? Um, it is a support, it is also a resistance. Why? Because when you see that it is being supported, Okay, it will bounce off from there. If it's not supported and then it will break through. And then once it breaks through, right, then this line become a resistance line. Then the next one become a support line. So then this originally it was a support line become a resistance. And then this become the new support line. Okay. Oh, the replay. Okay, the replay you can always find in the live cham YouTube channel live cham youtube channel you can always find uh, from the live cham youtube channel and they have all the busas webinar series all kinds of busa webinar series including this one okay so so here we are looking at the um, support level if let's say it is not being supported it will break it will break and then once it break right then this become the resistance and then the next level become the support and then if it didn't support and then it will break again and then this become the resistance and then this become the support okay so now my question is can anybody tell me at what price level i can buy this uems let's say you wanted to buy this one and then you you have been always wanting to buy but you do not know uh, when is the best timing so however you do see that the price is going higher and higher so can anybody tell me okay, which level you think is good to position? 
Okay. <laughs> okay, six two ah uh, six two five. Six two five. Oh, you mean sixty oh sixty ah uh, sixty two ah uh, this one six three five, right? Yeah. Okay, so there is this level whereby it is the six three five. Okay, which is this level, which is a one quarter level. And there's also another level. Somebody say is this level, which is 382. And that is about 56 cents, 56 cents. Or this level is um 63.5 cents. Okay, 63.5 cents or this level. Okay, now let me tell you. Okay, we never, we wouldn't know. Okay, I wouldn't know until I see a reversal candlestick. Okay, I repeat. I wouldn't know when will it be. Okay, I wouldn't know. Until when? Until I see a reversal candlestick. So if let's say this one go down, 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 down. And then um, there's no reversal candlestick. And then it continues to go down. Okay, until here, then you see a, a reversal candlestick. Okay, so this reversal candlestick can be a bullish harami, okay, which is one large green candle followed by a small red candle, bullish harami, or a bullish engulfing, or um, uh, like a, a hang, um, morning star. Okay, morning star is, yes, morning star, or um, in this case, uh, it will be something like a long tail, Okay, long tail at the um at the here. So it could be a, a hanging man, okay, a hammer, okay, a hammer. So in this case, um, this hammer, right, it could be also a hanging man. And that is because when you look at this chart here, you see that this is in a top position. So if let's say you see something like this, uh, like a hanging man, uh, basically you have to be careful, okay, that is a a chance that it may be looking at a, a market top because you have a long tail of this pattern here. So if let's say it go down, 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 and then you see that there is a hammer and then that is a reversal candlestick. But however, if let's say this hammer see at the top of the chart, uh, that one you have to be careful, like this one, okay? So there is a chance that it may be a reversing candlestick. Okay, bear trap or whatever. Okay, so whatever it is, right? All the swing high and the swing low. Okay, all these swing high and the swing low. I wouldn't say 100% you will see a reversal candlestick. It's not always 100%. But however, if you can see together the swing high and swing low, if you can see together with a reversal candlestick, and then you see that, oh, then this one become like a top. Okay, so this uh, I put there like a top is because I do see that this, these are like reversing candlesticks. So I do put at the top there. But however, although you have one red bar there, the next day you have a same height green bar that contra the bearish sentiment here. So this um, green bar that has the same height, okay, almost the same height. Okay, I will see that this one is the, red color, long candlestick. And then if you see that the next day you have this same um, height, but it's green color. So this means what? It means that this is actually um, trying to reverse the bearish sentiment on the previous day. Okay, the previous day you have this bearish sentiment, right? So then this green bar with the same height is to reversing the bearish sentiment. Then you look at the subsequent candlestick. Okay, so, so, so far, one big red and then one green bar, and then this become even out. So when it is even out, become 50-50. Okay, so you do not have any edge on this. So it's 50-50, and then it depends on the subsequent candlesticks, whether it can go higher. But nevertheless, what I want to say is that whenever you see that you want to apply the Fibonacci, okay, Number one, swing high, swing low. Identify the swing high, swing low. Number two, just when you are identifying the swing high, swing low, make sure you can confirm with the candlestick, the reversal candlestick. Because if you are the swing low, you can have a hammer. 
if you are in a swing high, you can have a shooting star, okay, or a hanging man. Okay, so uh, let's see another one. Um, let's say this one is uh, um, NVIDIA again. Okay, let's see if there is any of those um, reversal candlestick. <laughs> okay. Now, th this one, we do not see, um, let me see closer. Okay, we do not see in much of the, uh, except that you have this very big, huge red bar, okay? And that huge red bar is because this particular day, you have a big gap up, open at a high and then close down, okay? So that is looking at uh, a bearish moment whereby you, you gap up and then close down and then you have a big bearish bar. And subsequently, you do see that um, you have this green bar, um, but it's not as tall as the red bar, but it's more than 50% of the red bar showing here. So therefore, this one is trying to um, contra with the negative here. And then we see that it is subsequently it's going higher and higher. But however, you can't break this level. Okay, so this level become a resistance level. This one, this level, okay? And then you are seeing some rejection from that level. So therefore, this part here, we can say that it is a reversal. And then if we were to um, identify the swing high, we can say that this one is a swing high level, okay? So then we see that, oh, this is a swing high level. And then this is a swing low level, okay? So now I'm looking at this small chart here. I didn't look at the big chart, okay? The big chart, just how we already see, okay? It is about one quarter of a retracement. But however, on a smaller time scale, like on a leg by leg basis, from this swing low to this swing high, and then you want to see what is a retracement, what you can do is that you put the point A here, click, and then you put the point B here, this line, and then you click, okay? So point A is here and then your point B is here. Then you can start to see the retracement, how far it will go. Okay, so if it were to go by 382, then it will go to this level. Okay, it will to go by 50%, then it will go down to this level. But however, if it were to happen to go down by this level, you do see that this one is like a double top. So meaning that, if it were to go down by this level, most likely it will crash to this level because there is a small double top there. Most likely it will crash down to this level and probably this level as well. So meaning that you cannot go below that 382, okay? So if you are looking at going higher and higher, you are buying um, on this one and then you try to profit at a higher price, basically uh, you can go in as long as it is within that 382, okay? But once it is beyond that 382, basically you can't go in anymore. You, you just have to wait and wait and wait until here. You just have to wait because that 382 is the last draw line for you to see whether it's bullish or bearish. So if it pass that 382, that means that it may go down further, okay? So here, if you are looking at buying in here, you have to put a stop loss below that 382, okay? So the entry level is here, and then the stop loss level will be below this 382, which is this um, orange line, okay? Okay, let's try another one, okay? So currently, um, people are very interested in the property stocks, right? So we can look at these. Ah, so for this one, Okay, um, you do see that the volume bar has gone higher. Okay, so the volume are all very high here. So here we are looking at, there's a gap up and then a small gap up and then continue with another gap up and then there is a doji sign and then we see a reversal candlestick. Okay, the reversal candlestick is a big red bar. So therefore, we can see that this is a swing high. 
Okay, so this is a swing high, and then we can also see that this is a swing low. So this leg starts in the bottom here. So swing low, swing high, retracement. Okay, so we can plot our chart now. Point A, point B. Okay, point A and point B. So your B is actually here. This is your B. Top, at the top of it, okay? So I just want to do something like this so that you can see better. Now, if it were to go down, the first level is this uh, 236 and it has broken. Now it is heading towards this 382, okay? 382, so, but however, whether it is reversing from here onwards, we want to see the reversal candlesticks. So here we are looking at one red bar. This one is reversing this one. Okay. Then you see a small green bar. So small green bars means that positive. So this one reversing this one already. So we are start from zero again. So when we start from zero again, you look at this green bar. So green bar is there. Okay. So you put a, a positive note there. Then the next day, another same height red bar that contra with this bullish so therefore we go back to zero again so initially we have one then this one minus one back to zero and then we have one and then minus one back to zero one minus one back to zero so at this moment here we are still back to zero so we we haven't seen a bullish sign yet Okay, we haven't seen a bullish sign yet. So we need to see another candlestick. So at the moment, what we can see is that it is having 50-50. The sentiment is about 50-50. So meaning that the sentiment is a little bit uncertain because um, there is this um, red color bar that is trying to um, undermine this um, bullish sentiment here. And now it is moving horizontally. Okay, but however, you do see the tails are almost touching this 382. Okay, so if you were to see that this particular chart, as long as it is maintaining at this 382 level and then rebound from there, it is still on the uptrend. Okay, so it is still on the uptrend if it's still maintaining at this level, 382 level, which is what, about one third, and then you go because in any situation, Okay, in any situation, um, let's say you go three steps up and then you will have a one step decline and then you, you go um, three step up and then you have a one step decline and then you go three step up and then you have one step decline. So in any situation, right, uh, a healthy uptrend will be in a one third of a retracement. The retracement is about one third. Okay, you go three steps and then you retrace one third. And then you go three steps up and then you retrace one third. So in any chart, whether you are commodities, forex or stocks or whatever, one third of a retracement signify a healthy retracement and then the trend will continue, will be likely to continue further. So if you see that this one, okay, you are looking at this retracement about one third, okay? Not even one third, the one third is there. So which means that it is still on a bullish trend. It may still continue to go higher. It is still on an uptrend, okay? You wouldn't say, oh, I have to stop buying because um, it's going down. No, not, no, it's not, okay? We haven't confirmed the downtrend yet. It is still on an uptrend, okay? So that is, uh, okay, later we'll come to that. Okay, let's go to the slides here. Ah, okay. Eva, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay. Let me uh, erase all these and then... Okay. Okay, so that is uh, looking at the retracement level. So then this um, pullback, okay? So this pullback, or we call the retracement level, is the time to buy. Okay, so you can buy at one third retracement, half or two third. The buy level will have to combine with a candlestick reversal pattern. 
Okay, you have to double confirm with the candlestick reversal pattern. You must see that it is reversing first. Then only you can buy. Or you can draw a trend line. If you want, you can draw a trend line and then to see. Okay, you can always draw a trend line like this. And then you see if there's a breakout. Then only you can see that, oh, it's going higher. Then you can buy. Okay. Um, there are people who buy right at the bottom here. And that is because you are taking a bit more risk. You can buy here, you can buy here. Here is the bottom, and then here is the breakout. So which one is correct? There's no right or wrong. It's your risk, your risk uh, appetite. If you are able to take on more risk, you buy at the bottom here. And bear in mind, this bottom here may not be bottom. It may be continue to go lower because you still haven't seen a breakout yet. Okay, so therefore, this part here you buy, higher risk. Okay, and then here you buy, the risk is lower, but the price is higher. So meaning that you go in at a higher price. Okay, so there are some trade-offs. So it's depending on your risk appetite. Okay, so sell is the same thing. You are looking at the downtrend and then followed by sell like this. Okay. So this is a buy. Okay, you see that it is um it draw a line and then it's trying to break out, and then it's a breakout, and then you buy. And this one sell. And the exit strategy, place your stop loss and then your tar target profit. So after you have buy here, how do you place your profit target? Okay. Can anybody tell me where is my profit target? Which line? A, B. Okay. This is A, this is B, and then um, yeah, A or B. Okay, so after you buy in here, can anybody tell me where do you want to put your profit target? Okay, very good. Okay, A, B is also your resistance. A is also your resistance. However, you can always start with the B. If let's say your um, target is low target, you don't want too high, you can always start with the B. Okay, then um, you can always, uh, if you want to have a bigger profit target, you can always go to the A. And it also depends on your reward to risk ratio. And buy two, and one A and then one B to the moon. Uh, I think what you mean is that you sell, sell, sell. That means you buy here too. Then you want to sell one here. And then you sell the second one here. Sell the number two here. Okay, so is that what you mean? You buy two and then you sell one here and then you sell another one here. Okay, you can do that. Okay, meaning that, oh, I buy two here, then I sell here, and then I sell there. Okay, so I can do that. Or um, you buy one first, you buy one first. Okay, then you buy one more. You buy one more, buy. Okay, you buy one more. Because you haven't seen the reversal candlestick, you keep on buying, okay? This one, you buy another one more. Okay, so this is aggressive kind of uh, buying where uh, you buy one more, you buy one, you buy another one. If let's say it is breaking higher and higher, la, then you, if let's say it is reversing here, then you have to um, sell. Okay, so you don't buy this one, then you have to sell this one. Okay, you sell this one and then it go down and then you sell another one. So meaning you are trying to um, la laddering, okay, you are trying to laddering whereby um, as long as you think that it is going higher and higher, you don't want to sell so soon. So you want to capture the uptrend and then you keep buying on the way up, buying on the way up. And then you, you will start to reverse. When it starts to reverse, then only you can sell. You can sell one by one or you can sell all. Okay. So um, people, some, some people, they prefer to sell all because it's when you are reversing from here, basically it means that this is a strong resistance. You just have to sell all whatever that you have to sell all. But at the meantime, you are buying one, two. And then here, you didn't buy, and then you sell two. 
Okay, so th these these are um different ways of going in and then selling. So um depends on what is your risk. Okay, different people they prefer differently. So it depends on your risk. Okay, so purely depends on your risk. Um, okay, so cut loss. So how do you cut loss? A here or B here or C here. Okay. How do you cut loss? A, B, C. Okay. So I have a mixture of A and B. A and B, more B. Okay. More B. Okay. All are correct. All are cutting cut loss point, all are cut loss point. It says whether, where is your profit target because you want to keep a three to one reward to risk ratio. Okay, you want to keep three to one reward to risk ratio. Yes, bottom point is money management. Yes, it's money management, okay? So strategies is strategies. Um, don't, Focus too much on the strategies. A lot of people, they, they keep on saying, oh, I have the best strategies to trade. I have what strategies that... Okay, it's it's not about the strategies. It's about the way you trade, the way you manage your risk and, um, and um, subsequently. So it's not everything about the strategies, okay? The buying in, anybody can buy in. But how to exit, okay? Anybody can buy in. Always remember, anybody can buy in but not everybody can exit gracefully, okay? And that is because the, the, the hardest part is the exit strategy, okay? It's not the buying, it's the exit. So just now you, you can see that even the buying part, you can you see that I am actually buying in a different way. Either you buy one by one or you buy two first and then you know, even the buying is a, a different way. So it's the way that you are, the process, okay? So it's the money management. So three to one. So if let's say your um, reward, I mean your reward, which is your profit target is here. And then so most likely you just want to have a, very tight uh, uh, risk level here, okay? Because this one is this level and then this is a cut loss. So you are having two to one reward ratio. And if let's say your reward is here, then maybe you can afford this, okay? So you are looking at this swing high and then the swing low is here. So you will only cut loss when it is here, but if let's say you are looking at a, a longer term kind of a swing trade, swing, swing trade, okay, swing trade, which means that you are looking at a big swing. So perhaps you will look at C as your cut loss, then your swing, swing trade will be much, much higher, will be, will be, will be, Okay, so this level here, okay, and then your, your profit target will be two times or three times, okay, usually two times, okay, two, two times, one, one, and two. So it will be this level, okay, so your profit target will be that level. So then only you can have this kind of a swing low. So which means that all these ABC, they are they are good valid cut loss point, but depending on where is your profit target, okay? So, and this level of a profit target is not something that you say, oh, I want to sell there, means I will sell that. It's not something that you, you want to sell, then you will sell, okay? It is a level that based on this chart, okay? You have to see this chart and then look at the fundamental, look at the sentiments, and then look at this um, technical. Based on this chart, right, what is the chances of going into those levels? What are the chances of going to those levels? Okay, so let's say if um, the sentiment started to go bearish because uh, last night US, um, the NASDAQ dropped more than 1% and then the Dow Jones fall more than 100 points. So the sentiment started to get negative, okay? So if let's say the, the sentiment started to get negative, right? 
then of course you you can't give this kind of a sky kind of a target it, it's it doesn't make sense okay so therefore under that situation then only you said okay because of this uh bearish sentiment right i can't i can't um go for too high i will have this profit target and then i have this cut loss okay my cut loss is very very narrow and then my profit target is also very, very narrow so then i have a very uh, small uh range there okay and another thing, you also need to look at this chart because sometimes um, different chart also have their different characteristics. Okay, why do I say that? There are certain chart that they can behave, uh, for example, okay, the KLCI index. If you look at the KLCI index, right, one day of a movement is around about 10 to 20 points. The maximum is 20 points, okay? Um, minimum it is swing low and swing high for the day is about 10 points difference. So if you are looking at this kind of a narrow range, the broad market is like a 10 points of a swing high, swing low uh, range. Then of course, this particular um, individual stock, you can't have too big the price target as well. Okay, so meaning that when you are trading, right, it's not about, oh, I just want to look at this Echo Vest. Oh, I just want to look at this uh, IWCT. It's not something that you just want to be micro and then you look at one thing. You have to be macro. You look at the big picture, look at the sentiment in the US, look at the overall in the KLCI index. And then, then you look at this um, particular stock that you are trading because all this will link together. And then, then it will decide of where do you set your profit target and then where do you set your cut loss. Okay, so it's all about these things that determine your profit target and your cut loss point. So you, you can't um, go by like a, a formula. Okay, there's no straight formula. Everything is, um, you look at the situation and then you have to act accordingly. Um, going with... Going, uh, would you adjust the stop loss when the stock price move higher? Yes, ah, that's a good um mention, okay, by um Jin, uh, Jin Jin Ong, okay, so that's a good mention. So, if let's say you the price keep on going higher and higher, you can always um raise your stop loss higher because all these are support, right? So, you can raise your stop loss higher, but at the same time, you can always add in your position. Okay, add in. Okay, so you don't just buy one, but you add in. And um, inflation rate, yes. Okay, inflation rate is rising. And why? Okay, uh, this one is a bit on the uh, background. If you look at the inflation, okay, there are two driving forces about the inflation. One is that the oil price. Okay, the oil price go higher, then the inflation will go higher. The other one is the um the the demand, the aggregate demand of the economy, which is the demand, okay? Whether people have purchasing power or not, okay? Now, recently, we do see that China have a deflation, deflation, okay? Meaning that their purchasing power is too weak and then the price drop. Now, in um, US and European countries, they are having inflation problem. Okay, so inflation problem, if you look at the uh, problem, is it driven by the oil price or is it driven by the purchasing power, the US inflation? Okay, Faisu, what do you think? The US inflation, is it driven by the oil price or is it driven by the purchasing power? What do you think? Okay, um, in the past two, two, three years, because of the stimulus package and then also because of the uh um this uh low unemployment a uh, very good job data and low unemployment um their purchasing power is there okay it's strong but at the same time the oil price if you see the currently the oil price it has secretly go uh towards the $90 per barrel it has been below the $80 for quite some time now it is going towards the $90 per barrel so you are seeing that the oil price started to creep up Okay, so going higher and higher. So therefore, this inflation is here to stay. It's here for the US 
people to suffer, okay? Because you 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 in the short time you won't be able to um get that kind of uh, uh inflation. I mean um it won't you the price will not come down in the short period of time because of the high crude oil price at the same time your purchasing power. So you are looking at the Jerome power on the 19th of September. Now it's uh, 7th of September. So 19th of September, um, they are either going to raise the interest rate or they're going to pause the interest rate. So initially, people are looking at if the inflation is coming down, so perhaps Jerome power will pause the interest rate. But however, if let's say the inflation going higher, then they will have to continue to raise the interest rate. Okay, so which means that the US interest rate is going to be now is about seven, uh, 5.25 to 5.5, right? So with another 25 basis point, it will become 5.5%. Okay, and then um, so this 5.5% is just looking at the um, uh, OPR. And how about those um, mortgage loan? Okay, the mortgage loan, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the 30 year mortgage loan is already 7.5%. The 30 year mortgage loan for the US. And they do not do flexible loan, they do fixed loan. So you're going to fix for 30 years 7.5%. Wow, this one is what kind of an investment can give you 7.5% per year? You are not getting the, the return from the property from, for 7.5% and yet you are paying the bank 7.5% every year. So this is a, a, a big burden to the people there. So now people are looking at the property market in the US. It may not sustain because of the high interest rate and the mortgage rate, it may not be sustainable. So therefore, back to this um, US market, how far can it go higher? Okay, how far can NVIDIA go higher? How far can all these tech stocks go higher? So in the end, you will still have to face the sequence, the consequence of the, the, the fundamental. Okay, so which, which I think that um, the market, the economy are still on a weak side fundamentally. Okay, when rates go up, it will affect the tech stocks. Yeah, tech stocks will go down. Rates and the tech stocks, okay? Will rise of oil price impact the CPI? Um, yes, yes, definitely. Because the rise of the oil price, right, it will be the cost, cost push effect onto the CPI. Because a lot of people, they rely on the petrol. Your transportation rely on the petrol. And if the petrol costs um, keep rising, then your cost of um, uh, living will be rising as well. So that's inflation. So back to here. Okay, so when you want to put your exit strategy, okay, very important, you look at the Fibonacci as well as um, one more thing. Okay, not only you look at the Fibonacci level, you also look at the 20 day and the 200 day or the 50 day moving average. Okay, so if let's say the, the lines are here and then the 20 day moving average is around there. So you can see that these lines are all in line together. So then this even double confirm your cut loss point. So not only you want to see that it is this level, but also coincide with one of these or two or more of these uh, moving average lines. So which means that if you have the 20 day, the 200 all come together here, all these three lines all come together here, then triple confirm, okay? It's, at first, you double confirm. Then you have triple confirm. Okay, triple confirm that you definitely have to sell at that level. Okay, so do you see that when you are applying this Fibonacci, right? I'm looking at moving average lines. I'm looking at the candlesticks. Okay, I'm looking at two other technical components. So you are not applying Fibonacci alone as it is. Okay, you can't apply this Fibonacci alone as it is, but you are actually looking at that um, you can use the simple moving average for index and for the blue chip stocks. And then for tech stocks, you can use the exponential moving average for tech stocks. Okay. They are about the same. Okay. They are, the difference is not that big. So you can um, pull out these lines 
together and then together with the moving average, together with the Fibonacci retracement, and then together with the candlestick, reversal candlestick pattern. And then you see all this. And if there's a gap, you look at the gap. Gap analysis also coming in. So all these, all these come together, then only you can make certain decision. Yeah, never trade with uh, one indicator alone. Okay, never trade with one indicator because uh, you, you need confirmation. Okay, you cannot be, um, when you, you say that, oh, I want to cut loss here. But if you didn't see that the 200 day moving average line is there, and then you say you want to cut loss there, then I think that's a big, big mistake. Because immediately when it breaks below that 200 day, right, it will crash. So better safe than sorry. Okay, put up the moving average line and then to see that everything is in line. Okay. Okay. Okay, then um, we look at some of the real chart. Okay, we look at some of the real chart by um. Okay, before we look at the real chart, let me go through some of these um, theories, important theories. So the use of the Fibonacci numbers in technical analysis, okay, it is uh, uh, it's a very common trick, okay, by the traders. It's a very common trick. And it is actually a, a very important support and resistance uh, level for us to um, trade. And it and can also be a price target and an exit um, target as well. So there are some numbers here that we need to take note of. Number one, 23.6% of a retracement usually imply that the prior trend will continue. So if you see that it's only one quarter of a retracement, most likely it's going to be bullish again. Okay, most likely. Number two, 38.2% of a retracements are considered neutral retracements in a healthy trend. Okay, like I said, you go every three step up, you retrace one step down. Every three step up, you retrace one step down. So it's just telling you that it is healthy only. Neutral, healthy. Okay, it doesn't mean that it is exceptionally bullish. But if it's a 2, 3.6, ah, exceptionally bullish, right? But if it's just one third and then you go higher, just neutral, and then you just continue this um, uptrend. But if you have a 50% of a retracement, if it retraced by 50%, so this here and then the top here is this level, okay? This top here. So you are looking at this height here, okay? So this height from here, let's say this is one ringgit. And then you go all the way to two ringgit here. So this swing high is two ringgit, swing low is one ringgit. And then when you want to calculate the Fibonacci 50% retracement, can anybody tell me what is this price level? Anybody? By looking at the um, mental calculation. Very good, okay, very good. Okay, so 50% means that you reduce because this, from here to here is one ringgit difference. So one ringgit difference divided by two is 50 cents. So you minus 50 cents from this two ringgit level, and that will give you 150 here. Okay, this level. So if let's say you retrace until 50% already, and then, then only you go higher. Okay, so then that means that the, the uptrend is a bit shaky now. Okay, people are like, don't know whether it will continue and then there are 50-50 and there are a lot of uncertainties here. Okay, when it reached that 50% of a retracement. And if let's say it reached that 618%, okay, it may mean that a new trend is establishing. So meaning that it could be a reversal, trend reversal. So, but normally if you are bouncing off at this 618 level, you are still okay. Okay, so normally if you are bouncing off from this 618 level, right, go all the way down and then you bounce off, you are still okay. What is not okay is when you go beyond that 618 level, ah, that is not okay, meaning that you probably will go back to the um, base here, which is your original point, and then it's like 100% of a retracement. Full retracement, okay, full retracement meaning that you are coming to the neckline. If it's a chart pattern, it will be a neckline. And then when, once you break that neckline, you go all the way down, okay? So when you see a full retracement, number one, 
it could mean that you could see a crash, possible a crash. Number two, it could be a horizontal trend because you are having a full retracement here, then you bounce back and then you hit this and, and then you come down. So then you could be in a horizontal trend. Okay, what is, give you one example. Okay, CIMB. Okay, so this one, you are looking at this level. Um, horizontal line, this level, and um, this level. Okay, so let's say you are looking at this level. So when it is going, touching this level, then it go down, okay? And then it go higher again, and then it go down again. So from here to here, we see that there's one swing low and then one swing high. And now we want to see the reversal here. So swing low, swing high, and the reversal is 618 over here. Okay, so this is a 618 reversal, and then, then it go higher. So this leg here has a 618 reversal, and then it go higher. Now, what if it go higher and higher and higher and higher here, until here? Okay, it break the previous high. Then, can you still use the Fibonacci retracement? Yes or no? Okay, if let's say the price go above this level, which is the swing high, go beyond that swing high level, go to this level. Can you still use Fibonacci retracement? What is it that you need to use? As long as you are, mm, okay. So as long as this swing low, you are still less than that swing low, you can still use a retracement, right? But once you see that it go past that swing high, then you have to use Fibonacci extension. Okay, so here the Fibonacci extension, we have to use point A, B, C. Okay, for the Fibonacci retracement, we use point A and B. Okay, for the retracement now, we use point A, okay, point A and then point B, swing low, swing high, as simple as that, Fibonacci retracement. But for the extension, we have to use one more point. So you have to click point A, Click another one, point B, and then click another one, point C. Okay, so let's do that. Here, Fibonacci extension. The first one is retracement. Huh? Then the second one is called extension. Okay, we click one extension. Okay, so just now, this one is A. This one is B. And then this is a retracement, right? Now it is going higher and higher and then maybe it can break higher high, maybe, okay? So therefore, I continue with the A, B, C. I continue with the A and B first, and then, then I show you the point C. So A, here, B, click, and then C. C is here, okay? Point A, point B, point C. This C is here, okay? This C is here. Okay, you can you can do like this or you can you can do something like that. It's it's the same actually. It's just a way you is which one is more convenient. Excuse me, which one is more convenient for you to see. So if it happened to be um, looking at that, then you are looking at this Fibonacci extension. So for Fibonacci extension, right? So if it pass this higher high, then the first level that it will go is this five point eight five. Okay, so this 5.85 will be the first level because that is one. And then the next level, actually, there is one more level here, which, which is uh, 1.5. Okay, so after that 1.5, then only become 1.618. So, and then after this 1.618 will be the another Fibonacci level. So you are looking at this will go higher. Okay, so this is called extension. It's whenever you have a higher high, higher than the swing high, Okay, the price is going higher and then higher than the swing high. Then you will have to pull out this extension and then you click A, B, C. Used to find resistance and target price. Yes, you can also find the uh, profit target as well because once you see that it is going higher high, right? Then you are very happy. It means that it will go higher. So then 
which level you will sell. So you can sell at 5.85, you can sell at one uh, 5.99, which is six ringgit. You can sell at six ringgit. You can sell at 5.85, okay? So these are the levels that you can try to profit target, okay, your, your profit target. Okay, and th these are the resistance, definitely. Okay, so these are resistance as well, okay? So let's try another one. So this is a CIMB. We try another one. Uh, let's say uh, and uh, or property stock. Okay, so let's say one property or a YTL. Okay, let's say YTL. Hmm. Okay, YTL. Okay, so here a uh, very nice uptrend. Okay, and. Very nice uptrend there. I um, erase all this thing. So it starts from the low bottom here and then go higher. And then now it is like, so from the first glance like this, right? How, what is the retracement here? What pop, what ratio? Okay. Can anybody tell me what's the ratio of the retracement at like one glance like that? What kind of a ratio of a retracement is that? The big picture, okay? So the big picture retraced by how much? Yes, around there, around one quarter, one fifth. You know, it's not definitely not one third, lah, okay? So it's about one quarter like that. Okay, very good. So is it bullish or bearish? So naturally, if it's one quarter, you have to say that it is very bullish, okay? Bullish, yes. So it is very bullish. So now our next task is, um, what is a retracement level? Okay, so first we analyze the retracement level first, then only we talk about extension. Okay, because now at the moment it hasn't crossed that higher high here, it haven't. So we, we focus on the retracement level. So here the retracement level, first we measure from here to here and then here. Okay, so that is giving you a big macro picture. Okay. So this big macro picture is looking at here. And then you have uh, one quarter, not even one quarter, okay? So it shows how bullish it is. So big picture, very bullish. Then smaller leg, okay? So this is a smaller leg. So actually this one leg by one leg, you can, you can, um, you can, you can calculate, okay? You can use the Fibonacci. You can use Fibonacci from here, and then swing high, swing low, swing high, and then retracement. Swing low, swing high, and then this retracement. Swing low, swing high, this retracement. Swing low, swing high, this retracement. And swing low, swing high, and this retracement. Okay, we, we go to the last one. Huh? Swing low, swing high, and this retracement. So now we do see that the last leg here, there is a bridge of that 618 level. There's a bridge, okay? Now, this one is an important message to people. It means what? It means that this big bullish trend, it is weakening already. Okay, starting to see some weakening sign, starting to see, because you have actually overshot a little bit to 618 overshot a little bit so it has weakening so then but however you see a reversal here so therefore this one is looking at re 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 reversal and this reversal right it's for you to enter okay so it's for you to enter so you can enter at this point and then you put a cut loss below this 618 okay maybe this uh this green candlestick end of this green candlestick Okay, so you can put a cut loss there and then you can enter now and then you can have a profit target where? You can have a profit target here or here, also can, okay? So uh, it depends on what is your risk. If let's say you're very, very scared, okay? Oh, I'm very, very scared. Okay, I <laughs> a little bit of profit and then I'll take profit, okay? So that, that is your, your choice, okay? Nobody can say whether you are right or wrong. It's purely your choice. And then you can also go for that one, okay? So let's say you enter here and then you go higher, okay? So, so now this one is going lower, okay? So lower doesn't matter because this one we are looking at the daily chart. So it is lower 
only at the end of the day, then that is the closing. Okay, so then you see, oh, after the end of the day, then what was the level? Then only you decide. So I will say that um, in any situation, since this is a very big candlestick, the green candlestick, you can put um, the midpoint. Midpoint of this candlestick is actually half here. Okay, you can put a midpoint of this candlestick at the half there, and then you can see that as your threshold. So if it happened to close below that midpoint by today, 5 p.m., then you know that the next day, basically, you have to sell already because basically it has lost its momentum. Okay, you if you do not want to sell, then at least you say, okay, I want to wait until this end of this candlestick. Also, I need to sell. So if let's say it's really losing the momentum. Okay, so but at least this midpoint here gives you the first level of uh selling, whether it is bullish or bearish. Okay, so if it managed to keep above this level, so it is still bullish. Okay, so at least this tell you this trend. Okay, let's say um let's say this is uh fine, okay, and then you are going into higher high, and then it go higher, higher, and then it reach here. Okay, then the next part you need to do is a extension. Okay, so let's see we um use an extension. So just now we are looking at here and here. Okay, so now we look at point C is here. So we can use this extension and then we can click A, B, and C. Okay, so with this, you can see that, oh my, if I were to, if I, if this one were to go higher, break higher high, higher than the swing high, then maybe this is my, first target 1.74 okay 1.74 is my first target if it happens to go above it then only you go to the higher one okay okay now so far we have been looking at uptrend okay the downtrend is the same thing so if i were to share with you the downtrend like um so far what is downtrend um okay last year the microsoft was a downtrend Okay, last year the Microsoft was a downtrend. Okay, we 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 say that we are last year. Let's say we are last year. Okay. So same thing last year. Um we are also looking at that. We can also apply the Fibonacci in a downtrend. So this is a downtrend. Okay, so we can also apply the Fibonacci in a downtrend as well. So this one, I erase first. Okay, so this was the top and then this is a swing low. Okay, so we can apply this leg using the Fibonacci here. Left to right, uh, left swing high to the right swing low. Okay, left to right. Whether you are plotting the uptrend or downtrend, always plot from left to right. Okay, so in this case, my left will be swing high and then my right will be swing low because I'm in the downtrend. So then this become my Fibonacci retracement of 618, exactly at the 618 and then it reversed from that 618. And then it reversed and then reversed and then, then it passed this swing low. It passed that swing low and then it go uh, rebound. So therefore, I know that this one is going for a extension okay so then you can go for uh, extension okay extension huh? so a again b again now plus one more c c okay plus one more c c is this uh reversal here re retracement here yes c is here and then you can see that the first target is this one is this level so this is the first target rebound and then did it go to the second target no, it didn't go. Okay, so this pretty much was the first target. That's it. Okay, slightly overshot a little bit and then it rebound. And then, oh, there is one more here. Aha, there is one more there. Okay, so it, it does go down to this level. Okay, so that is the second target here, which is near that one six six one eight. It's near that. Uh, maybe the half is here already. Maybe this one is more like a half, 50%, 1.5. Okay, then before it go higher, 
Okay, so downtrend also you can see, uptrend also you can see, but the trick is that you always plot from left to right. Okay, so case study. So I've been showing you the case study. And then um, this one is um, me equipment in uh, 2021. Okay, me equipment 2021, September. And um, we see this head and shoulder. Okay, this is a big head and shoulder. And the top swing high is here. And then the swing low. Uh, no, swing low is here. Okay, we are measuring from this swing low and then to this swing high. And then this is a retracement. So this retracement is 50%, almost going to 61 and then before it rebounds. Okay, so this is looking at big picture. Major swing low, major swing high, and then major bottom. So for Fibonacci retracement, you can first, you have to go for the major swing high and swing low to see the big picture first. Then only you go into the smaller one, uh, leg by leg, meaning that, oh, I want to analyze this part. Then you identify this swing low and then swing high and then this retracement, okay? But first you have to see the big picture first. Then only you go to the swing low and swing high of the smaller leg. Then you can predict what is going to happen here. Okay, so there's, oh, swing low, swing high. Then this one is a retracement of about one third. And then, then it will go higher. And then usually what I also see in, instead of looking at the candlestick reversal, right? Try to identify a W chart pattern here. Okay, if you see a W chart pattern here, and it's also a confirmation of a reversal from there as well, okay? Okay, so uh, let me... Let's go to the next one. And um, we can also apply the Fibonacci with the RSI because all this oversold, right? All this swing high, swing low, right? It will also coincide with the oversold, overbought situation. So just as we said that we want to confirm with the moving average line, we can also confirm with the RSI as well. Okay, so therefore you have this RSI here as well. Okay, and the uh, money management is important. Um, it determines where is your cut loss. Okay, you, you must know where is the potential price target first. Okay, so if the price target potential is very high, then your cut loss can be a bit far. But if let's say you see that this is a horizontal market, it won't go too far, then your reward to risk will be narrow. Okay, so that's how you can, uh, you can adjust because of the environment, because of this whole um, financial um, environment, it could be determined by the US market, it could be determined by the local market. Okay, so then now next session, I want to go into the ETS. Okay, okay, so we can also um, incorporate all this um, chart reading together with the portfolio that we want to construct. So um, I think all of you, anybody, okay, anybody who doesn't have this, uh, I can see your chart. I can't see your chart. Oh, can we use people on the RSI? Oh, okay. Uh, let me answer Faisal um, answer. Okay. Um, you can use the Fibonacci on the indicator because for the indicators, right, I do draw chart pattern and trend line in the indicators. I do draw that. Okay. And then you can also use the Fibonacci also, but for how, however, um, in practice, I don't do that. It's because I can see from my eyes that what is the ratio. So usually I will not apply this Fibonacci over there. I see from my eyes what is a approximate ratio and then that will give me the idea, okay? But however, for the price chart, I will apply the Fibonacci over there, okay? Okay, so, okay, now we come to the next session here. We have, um, um, talk about that Fibonacci and then we wanted to let's say we want to buy some stocks okay so we come to this um, Busan Academy simulator equity simulator so how many of you have not opened this equity simulator and if you haven't opened this equity simulator uh, you put a no there have not okay Shirley okay so I give you this link you go to um, Busa Academy, I'll give you this link. 
Okay, and this they will they have a virtual um virtual uh, money. That means they'll give you one hundred k virtual money for you to trade. Okay, you you can apply that Fibonacci um chart that you learned just now, and then you can start to trade on a paper virtual paper. Okay, paper trade is very interesting. So you you click that link. And then you go to your login. Okay, so there's one login that or sign up. So you click login and then you will sign up. Okay, so so if you because I already signed sign in already, so this become my log out. Okay, for those of you who come to this page, right, you'll see that there is a login. And after you log in, right, then you'll see that there's a sign up. So for those who are new, you can um Join. Okay. Ah, Chin Chin say join before. Very good. Okay. So new, you can sign up using any of your Gmail. Okay. You just sign up. Very easy. You sign up with any of the Gmail. Just put in your name, your um phone number. I'm not sure whether you need to put your IC number, but you just put your name and your email address. That's all. Okay. And then you will come into that. So once you are into it, right, you go to this simulator. Okay. And then you go to the equity. And then there is also a derivative. Derivative is when you want to buy the futures contract. Lah. But today we do this equity. Okay, so you click this equity and then you will come to. Yeah. Okay. You'll come to this trading portal here. So this is the trading portal and then they will give you 100,000 virtual money. Okay, so everybody can trade. 100,000 virtual money. So it's very fun because um, you have learned panic analysis just now and then you wanted to apply whether you can you know, be profitable if you are trading. So you can um, use this account and then you can start to trade. Okay, let's say um, we go back here. Uh, we look at today uh, what is their top uh, trade okay the top trades are glove stocks are moving fast um and echo vest the properties properties constructions are profit taking okay properties constructions are all prof profit taking now and the glove stocks are moving higher they say okay why don't i trade the glove stocks okay so let's say i key in this top glove here Okay, so if you want to trade, you have to go into the 15 minute chart. Okay, 15 minute chart. Okay, we go, uh, so, but uh, big picture first. Okay, we always go from the big picture first. Okay, we go to the big picture first. Uh, this is a long term downtrend, and then now you are having a a breakout here. Okay, a small breakout here, but this is a long downtrend and then you're having a, a, a breakout here so you can you can see this daily chart it is going higher and about to reach this 200 day and this is a daily chart okay about to reach this 200 day and you can use the the Fibonacci here you can, you can swing high and then swing low and then what is that up potential there okay so we go to the swing high A, swing low B, and then the retracement. So from here, big picture, we are looking at uh, one third of a retracement is around 90 cents. Okay, so this level is around 90. One third is this one, this level, 90 cents. 90.5, 90 cents and 5 cents, okay? So this is the, the first target. You are looking at um, 382. And then this level will be the 50%. So then um, at a big big picture, you know that, okay, 90 cents. If I were to buy now, uh, I'm looking at 90 cents will be the first resistance. And then subsequently will be the next one is 96 0.5 cents okay if i were to buy at 85 cents um 50 percent of a retracement will be 96 cents so i i will make one uh 10 cents okay if i were to trade this i i may 
I may end up making a 10 cents profit may. Okay. So then um, this is a big picture. It gives you a direction. Then you go to the 15 minute chart. Okay. You go to this 15 minute chart because the previously I draw this um, Fibonacci, the lines are still there. Okay. And then, but however, this 15 minute chart will allow you to see things in a uh, uh, bigger, I mean, a uh, smaller time frame. So every 15 minutes, the one candlestick will form. Every 15 minutes, one candlestick will form. So I can also draw a Fibonacci here from this swing low to this swing high and then see where is the purchasing level. So I can click this Fibonacci and then swing low and swing high and then this retracement. Okay. So here. I am looking at if the retracement is around um, 318, it will be this level, 83 cents, okay, 83 cents. And uh, if it's one quarter, it will be 84 cents, okay? So one quarter is 84 cents. So if let's say you are looking at buy, you can either buy at 84 cents or you can buy at that 80, the next one is, 83 cents okay or even lower is this uh 82 cents okay 82 cents so you can either buy at 84 cents or 82 cents Th these are the levels of the fibonacci levels okay so and that 82 cents is also the 20 day moving average as well the 20 day so these are the levels that of your entry. And then let's say you say, okay, I want to buy at uh, 84 cents. Then you go to this trading portal. You click this um, top glove. Uh, you click, and then you see that here, you can start to key in top glove already. Okay, I have 94,000, okay, because I have buy some of the share in my portfolio. Okay, so I can buy the top glove. And the price is 100 uh, per 100 shares. So I can put one lot, 10 lots. Okay, 10 lots is 1,000 shares. I put 10,000 shares. And then, okay, so since this is a virtual account, right? So then you can always say, okay, I want to put um, 20, okay, 20 lots, okay? The price, uh, I put my price, just now I said 84 cents, right? So I put 84 cents. Okay, I put 84 cents limit price, okay? Then um, I will not put a stop contingent because uh, let's say this one is, I, I do a manual one, okay? So it's not, there's no stop contingent. And then I just key in like that. So I click buy. So order buy, 2,000 share at, um, Value is 1,600 ringgit. Okay, great. And then it will be in the queue order. Okay, so then you can use this method to try to practice your trade. Okay, you can use that Fibonacci or you can use your other um, strategies as well. As long as you are um, practicing using this, I think it will be good. Uh, sometimes I also use this is to keep track of my, um, uh, my watch list. Because uh, every one of us, we always wanted to buy for uh, dividend stocks. Okay, so I do have a watch list which is on the dividend stocks, and um, let me see. Okay, watch list is here. Go go to the top here. You see, this is a watch list. Okay, so you click this and view the watch list, and I have a dividend stocks watch list. I have a technology. I have a uh, industrial, I have many. So let's see the dividends. Okay, I click the dividends. And then this will be my dividend portfolio here. Okay. So this is my dividend portfolio, whereby uh, you see that, oh, wow, all these are Amway, uh, which is a consumer, Astro consumer, and then Asiata is also um, Telco. B Auto, Consumer, uh, CIMB, Banking, Gas Malaysia is uh, uh, industrial, and uh, Hongdao Industry, industrial, Malakoff is a uh, utility, and then Maybank, 
uh, is a bank. Pavilion REITs is a REIT. Public bank is also bank. And then I have a combination of banks, industrial, consumer. Okay, I have uh, 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 some big combination there. So what I normally do is that I put these, I, I find all these is, you, you usually use a screener, okay? You can use a screener to screen for all these dividend stocks, okay? So which screener I will use? I will use a KL screener, okay? You go to KL screen, SE uh, screener. I share with you this link. I find this screener tool is easy to use. Anybody can find it very easy to use. So I give you this link, okay? So you click this KL SE screener. And then you see that there are all this um, for you to key in. So you straight, you just go for one, which is a dividend yield. Okay, I go straight to the dividend yield and I put in there, I want a 4% of a dividend yield minimum. And then the maximum, I didn't put anything. And then I go down, I click screen. Okay, so I just want to see what are the Busa Malaysia stocks that give me more than 4%, 4% or more. So then I see here are a big long list. Okay, so these are the stocks are giving you 4% and more. Many, many. Okay, so you can, you can uh, rearrange them. Okay, so what I normally do is that um, the category, you can rearrange according to the category. So then it will start with agriculture, building, all this. Okay, start with the category. Or another thing is that you can start with the um, your dividend yield or your market cap. You want to see which one is a bigger market cap. The smaller one, you don't want, okay? It's usually the too small, the market cap, I, I don't bother. So you go for the larger market cap stocks, okay? So you see that, oh, these are the large cap stock, blue chip stocks, and their dividends are very, very good. So, oh, all these are banks. PCAM, Tanaga, PetCAM, uh, Petronas Gas, um, Maxis, MISC, RHB. Okay, so all these, you can look at their fundamentals here. Okay, you can look at their PE ratio and then their net tangible dividend yield, ROE, all this. Okay, you can see that some are very good. The ROE is good and then the PE is low and then the net tangible, all these are good. So then you see, oh, what is that? Oh, that is Petronas Gas. Okay, Petronas Gas looks, looks good. And then another one is the Maxis also looks good here. Okay, but however, um, Maxis, now why the telco stock seems to be hot again? And that is because of 5G. 5G. Okay, so we are looking at um, the if the telco companies like Maxis, Asata, and all this, they can increase the subscription price then they can make more money, okay? So then the telco stocks will be in focus again, okay? So then we back to here. And that's how um, you can put all this in, okay? When you put this in, you add stock here, okay? So you just have to key in the stock name and then you just add, okay? Then it will be added here. So then you just watch this, your watch list. And when the price is uh, reasonable to you, then you buy here. <laughs> okay, so it will be like uh, um, based on the watch list and then you start to accumulate on the paper trade first. Okay, so you can buy from there. I think the best is that you, if it's the dividend stocks, right, you just have to use your savings to buy because um, now at this moment, one for something, right, it is a low level. For Busan Malaysia, it is a really low level. So if you are looking at a long-term prospect of our country, so we should be looking at recovery and then the economy should be doing better and better. So this is the best timing to buy the dividend stocks. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, let me see if I can answer yep, some of them. Yeah, a few questions on Q&A. So if any questions, uh, you may what? write in Q&A box here. Yeah? So the first uh, question by Yo is that what are the factors that determine the retracement ratio levels? Mm, there are many factors. Basically, it's the sentiment and profit taking. So in any any situation, right, you, you wouldn't find a, a share price that will go on higher and higher forever. It that there's definitely has a, a profit taking and a negative sentiments. So then there is this uh, retracement. 
Okay, whether it is a black swan event, then you have a full retracement or uh, no, no bad news means good news. Then you just have a profit taking a little bit and then you continue higher. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks, Pauline, for addressing the question. The next question by Faizu Ahmad. Do you <laughs> write any book on trading on news and sentiment? Uh, no, thank you, Faizu. I think you are my um, readers. Um, thank you so much. But um, at the moment, I'm not... Um, um, having that thought yet um, maybe in the future <laughs> okay thank you yeah thank you thank you yeah. okay thank you so let's much let's do one last question because time has run out uh, the ne next question is from Gary how long this equity simulator will be available for virtual money oh, no, I do not know I think the uh, so long that I think so long that Busan Mark Academy is here I think the equity simulator will still be here lah. okay <laughs> So it depends on when will uh, Bursa take it down. But if it's there, then you always request if your 100,000 uh, virtual money has run out, you can write in to Bursa to request yeah. for a refresh or reset yeah. of your account. Yes, that's a good thing. You can break the account and then you can still request for new money. <laughs> yeah. But of course, if you are lazy to request for a reset, you can use another email address uh, to sign up another account. Uh, then you have a fresh capital virtual money but you don't want to be trading virtual money all the time okay when you're ready you know <laughs> just get on to the real trading yeah yeah that's right that's right now it's low now it's actually quite reasonable this level mm. yeah. all right so uh looks like uh we have run out of time for any more uh, q a but thank you so much for paying attention in this session uh done by uh pauline young talk about Fibonacci retracement trading strategy. Hope that you all have learned enormous, uh, got enormous value learning from Pauline about how do you trade using Fibonacci retracement. Thank you so much, Pauline. Okay, thank you.